At the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to turn £100,000 into a million pounds using the power of property. Now, I'm not promising this will happen in a week or a year, because this isn't some get rich quick thing. This is a long term strategy that I've personally used for both myself and our clients over the past 15 years. So, first, I'm going to explain the exact step by step process, and then I'm going to show you three different ways you can speed up that process depending on the time and resources you have. So, let's get started. To start off with your £100,000, you're going to go out and buy two properties worth 165,000 each, giving you a total portfolio value of 330,000 pounds. Clearly this only works if you use a mortgage and I'm assuming you borrow 75% purchase price. That leaves room for the deposit, stamp duty, purchase costs, and a bit of wiggle room and still get both properties within your £100,000 budget. You could instead buy just one more expensive property. Nothing wrong with that, doesn't really make any difference. So that's the properties bought. Next, we need to make some assumptions about what's going to happen from here. Because let's be honest, none of us has a clue about what the future holds, but exercises like this only work if you're willing to make some guesses. So from here, I'm assuming that your properties grow in value by an average of 5% per year. Is that an aggressive assumption? Maybe it is. I went back and looked at the UK average over the last 25 years, and it has in fact averaged 5.5%. Now that period has included one big decline, quite a few years of being flat, but to be fair, a couple of big run-ups as well. So maybe a 5% assumption is on the punchy side. But as you'll see, I'm being pretty conservative with some of the other assumptions I'll make later. On the rental side, I'm going to assume that you make a return on investment on the rental income of 4% per year after all costs. And I'm also going to assume that rents increase by 3% per year. Based on previous data, neither of these assumptions seem particularly crazy. So with those conditions in place, all you need to do is let the properties drift upwards in value and let the rental income pile up. Then you use those two sources of profit to reinvest in more properties where you can. So you're not spending any of the rental profit, but nor are you putting in a penny more of your own cash. So let's look at the figures and see how this plays out. After five years, you'll have total equity of nearly £200,000, meaning you've practically doubled your money. Plus, you've got five years of accumulated rental profits in the bank, which should be roughly £21,000. By pulling out some of that extra equity, that's enough to buy one extra property. So going into year six, you're now the proud owner of three properties. Now let's roll things forward to the end of year 10. By now you've virtually doubled your equity again with it being worth £353,000. And of course your rental profit is increasing faster because rents are going up and you now own more properties. So you should be making nearly £7,500 each year in rental profit. At the end of year 10 then you should have enough combined equity and savings to buy another three properties, doubling your portfolio in one fell swoop from three to six. From there all there is to do is wait as the snowball continues to gather pace. And eventually, eight years later, taking you to 18 years after you first started, you have done it. You started with £100,000 and you've turned it into more than a million pounds worth of equity. Plus, there's tens or even hundreds of thousands of pounds of rental cash in bank. It's worth saying at this point, this is not the most robust modeling exercise you're going to see in your life. There are countless factors that mean it wouldn't work out in reality quite like this. Some of those factors would improve the situation, some will make it worse. It's a completely pointless endeavor to try to forecast everything down to the penny over even just a couple of years when reality is going to throw you multiple curveballs. What we're looking at here isn't the exact numbers, but the general principle. And really, is there any simpler way to turn £100,000 into a million pounds. All you've got to do is buy a couple of properties, not spend the money that comes back in, and be willing to wait. In the end, you've compounded your investment at a rate of around 15% per year, which beats the heck out of most other things you could do with an equivalent amount of risk and effort. Once you hit that million pound mark, by the way, you've got a few options. Your mortgages by that point will be about 50% of your portfolio value, which is pretty manageable. So you could just keep on letting time pass keep letting your equity go up and keep collecting the rent. Alternatively, you could keep buying more or you could decide you want to clear your mortgages completely and end up back with a smaller portfolio, but one that you own outright. But whichever you choose to do, doesn't matter. You've already achieved your goal. This is the safest and easiest way of turning £100,000 into a million pounds with property because it involves doing pretty much nothing most of the time. And by the way, if this strategy sounds interesting to you, but you don't have the time to actually put it into place, we run an investment company that will do all of this for you and there's a link in the description. However, for some people, that 18 years until the payoff could be a sticking point. And of course, there is plenty that you could do to go 
faster. One way to do this is to buy properties at a discount. For example, you could negotiate to buy a £200,000 property for £180,000. That gives you, assuming it's a genuine discount, effectively £20,000 worth of free equity. You might not be able to tap into that straight away, but it's still yours and it will move you closer to your target. You could also buy a specific type of property in an area where you believe that capital growth will be higher than average. And in practice, we always do both of these things when we're investing for ourselves and our clients. But what if you want to speed things up even further? Well, then you really need to put in more of your own time, skill and effort to stretch your money so it goes further. For example, you could pursue a buy, refurb, refinance strategy. Buy a property that's in need of some work, do that work, and end up with a property that's worth more than the total amount you spent on the purchase and the refurb. At this point, if everything goes well, you can refinance your mortgage based on the new higher value and pull some of your cash back out again. For example, say you bought a house for £80,000 and spent £20,000 on it, meaning you'd put £100,000 in. But in the process, you increased its value to £134,000. You might then be able to take out a mortgage for 75% of that new value, which is just over £100,000. That would mean that you own the house and have all of your original cash back out ready to use again. That is the theory. In practice, it's really, really difficult to get all your cash back out for lots of different reasons. But even if you manage to pull half of your cash back out, then that would halve the time to save up for the next one, allowing you to make progress much faster. Or of course, you could flip properties, buy a property, do it up and then sell it making a margin of say 20%. With your bigger cash pile, you can go and do a bigger project next time or even start running multiple projects simultaneously. Eventually, if you keep going for long enough and avoid making any major mistakes, you will end up with a million pounds in the bank. Both of these methods will allow you to get to the magic million faster, but it's worth being aware that there's more that can go wrong and it involves a more sustained effort. And of course, whichever strategy you pick, it's all going to take a certain amount of time. Property as an investment just isn't geared towards getting rich quick. Instead, it lends itself to building that investment snowball quietly over the years, leaving you with plenty of spare time to go and earn more money elsewhere. Because of course, the £100,000 you're investing today doesn't have to be the last £100,000 you'll ever have. If you have a way of making money elsewhere, then investing those extra funds in property, that million pound portfolio might not be as far away as it first appears. But whichever strategy you decide to pick, and no matter how fast you want to reach a million, you are going to need a very good understanding of exactly how buy-to-let mortgages work. So check out this video next to get the full breakdown.